Uh, it's great to be with you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to hang out with your congressman. Uh, that makes you automatically unusual. So uh, most people, particularly around lunchtime, try to stay away from talking about anything related to Washington, D.C. So uh, it's good to be with you. Um, I, uh, I also just want to say thank you to PUD3, not just for um, hosting us, but for the leadership that you all have shown on the issue of expanding, expanding access to reliable broadband service. Um, I think the Fiber Hoods program is really cool. Uh, I think it's actually really a big deal and can make a significant inroad in trying to, uh, to deal with the digital divide. And I guess maybe to start off with, while you may not uh, need this reminder, I'll share the reminder, which is this is a really big deal in part because uh, the district I represent is in the bottom 20% of the country when it comes to access to high-speed internet. And um, if that seems weird when I tell people that on the East Coast, they're like, no, 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 but you're, you're really near Microsoft and Amazon and some of these amazing technology companies. And, uh, and yet, uh, that's our reality. I, I had a meeting with a tribal chairman uh, out on the peninsula and I said, how's it going? He said, you want the good news or the bad news? I said, tell me the good news. He said, every one of our high school seniors graduated this year. I said, that's great. I said, what's the bad news? He said, well, for the first time, this was a couple years back, he said, for the first time, the state of Washington is requiring our students to take the state mandated exam on the internet. He said, we don't have high speed internet. He said, it's one of those questions where you answer 10 questions and click next page. And he said, we timed it. It took a minute and 44 seconds to get to the next page. So that's not going to work. So we're going to end up busing our kids a couple hours to a school they've never been in, for some of our kids to a town they've never been in. And you know, so this gets beyond whether you can watch the final episode of Game of Thrones on HBO Go on your iPad. This is like, do you have educational opportunity? Do you have economic opportunity? Can you start a business if you're looking for work? Can you find available jobs and post your resume to to those jobs. And I, I increasingly think about this almost like rural electrification was uh, decades back. And it's why it's fitting that this PUD has been as active on this issue as it has been. Um, frankly, I think the federal government ought to help, just like it did with uh, the effort around rural electrification. And that's why uh, this past week, we reintroduced a bill called the Broadband for All Act. It is a bipartisan bill. If you want to take a moment, I'll repeat that. Um, it's a bipartisan bill, and uh, we're really, you know, focused on something that's such a great direct fit with your fiber goods idea, in that it would create a refundable tax credit of basically 75 cents on the dollar uh, for for people, for neighborhoods, for local employers when they kind of pool together um, to try to extend internet access either to their neighborhood or to their business park, uh, or what have you. And we think this could make a big difference. And um, I know your uh, commissioners um, endorsed this idea, and I'm very grateful for that. We've seen folks all over the country kind of stepping up and saying they like, uh, they like this idea. Um, there's a few things that I'll mention, just because I often get questions about it. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't sort of stipulate a specific technology, the bill is technology neutral, so it means the tax credit could be used for infrastructure costs um, associated with really any technology that just sort of bridges that digital divide. Um, it doesn't include a minimum uh, service speed for users because I think depending upon who you are, where you are, and what your need is, that may be different um, for someone who may be, you know, in a retirement community out on the coast versus somebody who's trying to connect their business. Um, I guess I'll leave it at that. I, I really didn't want to talk at you. I more wanted to have a dialogue with you in terms of how you see things like this that could be helpful. And if you have other ideas of things that our office should be doing, um, that would be helpful. I'd love to hear that too. So should I take it over to Joel? Justin. Oh, to Justin. Right. Do you need a microphone? I don't think so. I can speak loudly. All right, cool. um, I do think that the, the Broadband for All App is a great partnership with the Fiber Bits, just like you shared. Um, really great opportunity to 
come together and try to break down the digital divide that you talked about. I think another thing that, that we're doing that we're really excited about to help, um, again, break down that digital divide is um, we created the very first low-income fiber discount program, definitely in Washington State, but perhaps even the nation on a wholesale level. We haven't been able to find another um, another utility type of situation that we have. And it's really a great picture of public-private partnership coming together. The way that it works is if a, uh, a customer qualifies for the low-income discount on the electric side, we offer them a $10 uh, discount for their fiber service. And we've asked our retail service providers to pass that through to the customer. But not only that, it, we also ask them to partner with us and to offer an additional $10 per month reduction. And so the customer, they've all agreed, and the customer is seeing a $20 uh, reduction per month in their cost of fiber internet at their homes, um, which brings their costs down to uh, lower than the published price of DSL in Mason County. Awesome. Um, and so we're no longer saying that um, in order to uh, to have good internet, you have to have bad internet. And so yeah. it, we're really, really excited about that. Um, and I think that's a, a great, another great partnership and example of ways that we can work together to help solve this digital divide issue. That's awesome. How many people are you seeing uh, use it? Uh, let's see, about 10% of our current fiber connected customers are on our low income uh, discount program, which is also uh, uniquely about 10% of our, um, all of our electric customers qualify for that. And I think that that's a really great picture because it shows that we haven't been cherry picking or picking and choosing places to connect fiber to over the last 20 years as we've been building the network. Um, it's been a, a fair um, representation. That's awesome. Um, we're also excited about the CURB program. You may have heard that we just received another um, CURB grant and loan. And so all together through our private programs and our CURB programs um, in the next four years, about 1,600 unserved homes are going to have access to uh, PUD fiber and, and our retail service providers. So we're super excited about that. That's a huge deal. That's awesome. One of our fiber champions is actually here in the room, uh, Larry Edgelin, um, is, the, is the champion of the Island Shores fiberhood on Harstein Island. And he did yeoman's work carrying this community <laughs> forward um, to get them signed up. And so maybe Larry would like to say a few words. Yeah, tell me how it works. <laughs> well, it works great right now. I, I don't know if I'm one of the first ones that's hooked up, but I am hooked up right, and operational and uh, happy with it. But I think, first of all, I really think POD3 should get accolades for Amen. bringing this program. It's made a, a huge difference in Mason County. And certainly to our little community on Island Shores and Harsey Island, which is probably about as far as you can get on the east side. So anyway, um, thanks to that, and, and uh, we've seen their crews and they're working really hard, getting everything installed, and we've had some adoption, but there's been barriers to the adoption, and some of that is the cost, the construction average. And uh, so people say, well, I'd like to put it in, but gee, I, I can't justify that total cost. But the program that we put forward, which was, um, to recover that cost over a 12-year period has really helped. Yeah. And uh, but would you think that a tax credit that covered 75% of the Oh, cost absolutely. Had not to that one yet. But I mean, it is definitely something that is uh, a barrier. That total cost and a 75% um, reduction or tax credit or whatever you want to call that is is going to be very beneficial. Uh, the other barrier that I'll bring up and it's just discussion, we could bring it up later, we can talk about it some other time. And that is the other barrier that I see is that we have probably 80% of our community is made up of professionals that are there for the weekend, the season. And uh, they can't justify putting it in construction adder plus the ISP cost and for three weeks of usage. So my thought was that there was some discussion that could be held on how to do meter a meter process where you pay for what you use or how you use it or when you use it. Uh, to me, that would be one way to do it. But again, we've got people signing up, um, and hopefully we'll get everybody that signed up on the viral program. Because <laughs> I think we had, I think we had 15 or 
I think it's 15 or 20. And I think we've probably got probably seven or eight installs right now that I'm, I'm aware of. A lot more than that. Have been installed. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That, that's good to hear. I don't hear from everybody, but I do see the trucks out there every day. So, But thank you. It was a marvelous program, and we certainly are the are benefit of it. You were able to watch the game of Thrones finale. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do stream. <laughs> but also, it's also nice to, to be able to do email and not have to wait forever. Yeah, for sure. It's funny, I just had a phone call with Dave Ross from Cairo. And we were, he wanted to talk about this bill. And I was trying to do the call from the parking lot and I couldn't get reception. <laughs>
so the kids can do their homework on the bus because if they live all the way out where Ashley lives, um, they can't do their homework when they get home. So yeah. that's cool that you do that. We have. Um, I I only live ten minutes from Bel Air. I'm out in the Cahuilla River Valley community, um, and I just moved there and found out after the fact that we have no internet access out there. I could get Hughesnet. Um, and of course they cap you at like five gigs and the price is steep. Um, and that is our only option. So my days of working from home in the evenings are done for. Um, speaking of Game of Thrones, I watched an elf and elf pass um, <laughs> with the phone up on the dash because we don't have internet access. And I mean, we have so many kids that live in that community and there's just no options there. Ashley, may I interrupt? Uh, I heard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I to the community. I heard has funded the um, the fiberhood of Tahir River Valley, and so within the next so oh, three years or so, is yeah. the the engineers are probably grinning at me now. But about three years or so, <laughs> so you yeah. should, uh, you should have gigabit access. <laughs> you can now work from home. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. <laughs> Yeah, well, if I, I prefer to be able to work from home when needed, so, yeah. yeah. Is there, can I ask something about the, you said the system on the buses? Mm -hmm. Do you just find that at a dis district college? Yeah, the or? company, um, through, what's the, yeah. we have a, a grant that helps a little bit, but the company came to us and, and we're practicing. Um, and they're trying some things out to see what will work and what won't work, and so, we're getting a really good deal while they figure out how to make their advice better. So, and, and it is important for our students in order for that equity issue across the board. Um, as we are trying to go one-to-one, -one, um, especially at the high school level, um, because that's what they do see their peers doing um, elsewhere. But, you know, we can't assign homework online. We know that all, not all of our students are going to have access. I did, I have been trialing out um, one at my house. Um, and I get enough access to like access my email, but if I have to get into any type of system, it logs me out. It times it times me out before I can actually get access. So it does help some, but it's not an answer to all of our issues. Yeah. I like to add. I, I the, this the last maybe three or four years, I think we've seen some evolution into action on, on broadband across the country. For example. Uh, the issue of mapping uh, seems to be now on the radar as to having more accurate maps to be able to determine where to, where to bring broadband uh, to certain areas. Uh, the governor's broadband bill was passed in the legislature this year where pretty much every entity that has something to do with broadband gets something to help them with their expansion, which is, which is really good. Uh, the broadband for all bill, I, I hope that goes through because it's really something that that we saw it, we were going, that fits perfectly with our stuff. Uh, and, and just the evolving thought uh, in local, state, and federal uh, agencies about who and how they fund broadband, looking at it, just getting it out there and not uh, picking and choosing winners and losers. I think that's, that's really valuable. And uh, we appreciate your work on this. If there's anything we can also do to help represent, Representative Stefanik, we'd be happy to do that as well. Quick question. So um, my background is with the communications requirements at the community, and we use a lot of grant funds to um, take broadband out to several areas in Mason County. And I think the school district brought up a great point that one of the hurdles we always have is when you get into the low income and the rural areas, they don't have access to computers. And I know back when they used to do community connect grants through RUS, they would set up computer labs um, so that if communities didn't have access, they could at least um, have something nearby that they could use and the retailer would come those. Is that something that's been on the radar or any sort of subsidies to get computers into the homes? I know having a parent in the school district, so many things are online, yeah. um, but if you've got those houses that can't afford that, you know, to get a computer, computer to have the broadband access, it's definitely a hurdle. Yeah, I don't know. I, the short answer is I'm not sure. Uh, the, um, I know there's an effort, you know, in a number of the school districts, including when I was out in Angeles, they offer Chromebooks to the students. But uh, so there's the sort of the provision of the technology, but 
uh, in May, and since it's not the ability to get access to the So, jump in Six months, so I have some limited information, but uh, we are still doing the Community Connect grants. We're working on one right now, actually, in the uh, uh, Lake Cushman neighborhood. Um, so we've got uh, over 350 homes up there that have uh, committed to receiving service, uh, and we have a uh, community center that will be going in in the uh, main neighborhood area, uh, and we are funding um, the uh, I don't want 
that to be the answer for our region. And I think part of the way we overcome that is by making investments in our communities so that people see a future there. Other issues on your minds? You don't want to go eat lunch? I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, Tom Farmer, Mr. County PD3. Great to see you. Nice to see you. Um, one, I'd like to, on behalf of PD3, thank you for coming here, but I, I want to remind you that this room, this very room, had over 800 people in it throughout the course of the day talking about broadband and fiber a few years ago as we first introduced that. So this room has the karma of, <laughs> of the citizen rate payers uh, that are part of the PV3 fabric. So uh, this is, uh, it, it, it's a needed uh, program. What you're trying to do solves a lot of issues. And we would hope that through your bipartisan efforts that this makes it through Congress, but it would be ideally suited for the uh, public-private partnerships that we're trying to achieve and the synergies that those can affect for rural broadband deployment. Thank you very much. You bet. You know, it's worth thinking about, um, I know that periodically there's, uh, the PUD is able to come out to DC, and um, it's worth thinking about the next time you do that, finding a way to highlight both the fiber hoods and the uh, low income support that you're providing, in part because I think it is so unique. You know, we can put together a briefing for other congressional offices just to, because I think it's important to evangelize good ideas. And I really appreciate the leadership of this PV um, in that respect. So we, should, we should think about that um, and uh, find an opportunity to do that. We like sharing good news. You know, uh, Derek, some other good news. Uh, a good example, again, in this room was uh, folks like Larry here who are citizen champions uh, in their neighborhoods, they're unpaid, but they've taken the idea behind that. And there's multiple uh, uh, fiber hoods that have citizen cha champions in the uh, Minor and uh, Tukuyi River Valley. Those, uh, those citizens have really rallied. They have a, a completely underserved uh, area, and you have to leave your house and drive to the state park to make a phone call. Your homework's not getting uh, delivered. It's very difficult. The f and uh, pass area is uh, now being addressed uh, through PD3 and some other partners. But uh, we, we, sh we, we have an opportunity to move forward. And the, the, the beauty of it is, is a collective group of folks, uh, publics, privates, uh, institutions like North Mason School District. Uh, we can move together. We, we thank you for your leadership and uh, bringing us together. We want to help. Yeah. Can we brainstorm on that? Sure. <laughs> Lay it on me. Well, I was just thinking, uh, where the backbone exists, why not have, in public areas, dollars put in by PD3 and make some public access? I don't know if that's a good idea, bad idea, but it would seem to give more people access in public places. They don't have to go to parks and whatever else. And go to more, maybe businesses, if businesses put up a place or something like that. It, it's something that a program that might might get adoption in, in more rural areas, but it, it can only be done where you have the backbone already there. Just a lot a of the, yeah, no, a lot of the federal programs that exist in terms of pro providing access are focused on providing access to, in essence, public facilities, whether it be schools or libraries, um, with the notion that if you can get it there, maybe you can, you know, uh, extend it from there. To sort of local, you know, the local community can use it. Um, so that's, I don't think that's a crazy idea at all. It's hanging on poles, places. All you got to stick into the water. <laughs> Washington State Law has a very interesting nuance to the, the PUD's participation and our authority to do telecommunication services. We are restricted to wholesale telecommunication services. So I'm glad that we have retailers in the room and, and on the camera um, who can hear about this type of opportunity because PUD's backbone is set up and we're able to, to, to backhaul that traffic that you're talking about, that wireless traffic. And so if a retailer wanted to set up wireless access points, we're, we're ready. And I uh, think that's a great idea. Too.
Other issues on your mind, ideas, suggestions, concerns, criticisms, compliments? <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I appreciate you taking time. I mentioned I got a stack of business cards here. I need to say um, a couple other things in closing. Um, I think we passed around. I do an email newsletter every couple weeks just to let folks know what the heck is going on back there. And if you don't get it and want to get it, feel free to sign your name up. And for those who may watch this on camera, you can go to my web page, which is just kilmer.house.gov, and there's a little link that says um, sign me up for your email newsletter. The other thing I just want to mention, and I say that in part um, because as I look around the room, I see folks who are who uh, are active in the community and engage a lot of folks over the course of a day or a week. Half of our staff here in the district does what we call casework, where if someone has an issue, really with any federal agency, we go to work on their behalf. And it's some of the coolest work we get to do. You know, if someone has an issue with Social Security or Medicare, most commonly for our district, it's the VA, um, immigration, IRS, you name it. Uh, we go to work on their behalf. We had a small business out in Clallam County where it had been more than two years that they were waiting on their tax refund. You know, it shouldn't take a call from your congressman's office to fix that, um, but it worked. Uh, we had a guy who reached out to our office. He said, you know, I fought the Vietnam War. Uh, I got shot up on a mission. I never got my Purple Heart. And um, in part because his mission was in Laos. And according to the federal government, we were never in Laos. Um, but we worked with that guy and we got his mission declassified. And probably the coolest day I've had in this job was getting a kind of Purple Heart to that guy's chest. And I tell you that because we can't solve problems we don't know about. And so as you engage the PUD's customers, as you engage the school district families, as you're out and about in the community, if you run into folks who may need a hand, put them in touch with us. We've got super talented people on our team who are uh, eager to help. All right? Cool. Thanks for taking a little while to hang out with your company. I appreciate it. <laughs>